Today I want to talk about avascular necrosis of the femoral hip. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dr. Simone Says. My name is Simone Eastman Yuan. I am a medical doctor with sickle cell disorder and I'm also the best-selling author of the book Doctor in a Patient's Body. But these days I like to spend my time making sure that every sickle cell survivor becomes a sickle cell thriver because it matters that you live well. Really, a vascular necrosis of most other uh, joint is going to be the same. Um, but we tend to see in sickle cell disease a lot of a vascular necrosis of the hip. And I know that you are well aware of what the medical sequelae is what they recommend, which is usually hip surgery. Uh, but I would like to offer uh, some alternative therapies to that and uh, to see if you could stave off uh, hip surgery with early intervention and uh, to be able to keep your native hip. Uh, so uh, one of the things that most people don't think about is what is your bone made of. The hip that you would be removing is a bone. It's a big bone. What is that bone made of? If you were to think about it, the bone is pretty much uh, made of minerals, bone minerals. It's actually called hydroxyapatite crystals. It's a, it's a, um, it's, it's pretty much uh, uh, calcium. Uh, and uh, a phosphate, and it's in a composition that creates a crystalline pattern and is called um, hydroxyapatite crystals. But really, the bottom line is that it's a lot of calcium. And by weight alone, hydroxyapatite crystals are over 70% of the bone. I mean, think about that. That's a lot of calcium. And we don't necessarily think or relate our diet to our bones and how we could be affecting them. But really, if you are wanting to reform your bone, you have to start thinking about what are the raw materials that you would need to be putting into your body besides doing other things to that location that would help uh, to recreate um, uh, strong bone. Um, besides weight-bearing exercises and all those things, usually by the time you find out that you have a vascular necrosis, you're um, already not probably wanting to exercise that joint. But let's roll back a little bit and talk about the, de the definition. We all hear a vascular necrosis avascular necrosis, AVN. What is that? Avascular necrosis. Avascular means without, va without vessels, so without um, circulation. Um, and necrosis is the breakdown, the death of tissue. So basically, it's the death of your bone tissue caused by lack of circulation. And so that makes sense, right? Because that's what tends to happen in sickle cell disease. There is blockage uh, to the circulation because of your sickle cells and your cells are causing your any that part of the um, bone or that part of the bone that is not getting circulation, it's not getting oxygen and it's not getting nutrients because that circulation is cut off. So therefore you're not nourishing that bone anymore and anything that's not nourished will die. And so eventually the bone starts to die off and the density of the bone becomes less and less until it's very difficult to even weight bear on the bone um, and the dying of the tissue, just like the dying of every tissue, um, causes pain. 
it's ischemia and it causes it, it, it's lack of oxygen and um, uh, organ death because of lack of oxygen and it causes pain um, so so we know what's going on so that's important because if we know what's going on and we know uh, what's causing it to happen we can sort of try to peel back the layers and ask ourselves at what point can we intervene to make what's going on reversible um, so the first thing we know is what the bone is made of and if we know it's made of and it's it, so we said about 70 percent or more of calcium and what else it's made of it's made of collagen it's made of fibers right um it will be made of proteins because there's some protein in bone it's made of uh inorganic salts so you'll have some phosphates and um and some um some other uh, calcium salts uh, that are making making that up um, so there's a, a composition of things there the bottom line is what's making up that bone is a lot of mineral and if you lose bone you're losing the mineral and you would have to to make if you wanted to make bone you would have to to ingest minerals a lot and a lot of minerals and you would give the bone all of the raw materials that it needs to rebuild that bone okay so we understand that part um so most people don't get uh, the minerals that they would need to make a massive bone back like that so you would then have to supplement and that's where things become tricky because not all supplements are equal so there are a lot of supplements on the market and a lot of times people have cut corners and because of that you're not getting what what they say you should be getting so I happen to use um, a mineral uh, multivitamin uh, amino acid complex uh, complex by um, a company called longevity they are not the only ones that can make a multi mineral complex but they are one of the lines that I have found to be reliable uh, I you can get it on Amazon I usually go through a distributor because you can get them for a little less um, and if you are using them on a, a regular basis you get free shipping and you get them for less and it adds up over time and so I, I use it like that but you can still get all of those w without going through a distributor um, if you know if money is not um, an option and you just want to buy it on on Amazon so um, it has uh, 60 minerals 16 vitamins 12 amino acids and then it comes in a bottle that ha it comes with another bottle that has essential fatty acids in it and uh, you ha it, it ha it looks pretty much like um, in like a omega it's an omega capsule it's omega-3 and omega-9 and those are the two essential fatty acids and they're um, they're packaged separately because the rest of it is a crystalline powder that is lyophilized it's a procedure um, and then kind of like freeze-dried and then uh, you can resuspend it to get all of your nutrients and have them in great condition and you could still ingest them and get the full function of them so um, the powder is called uh, tangy tangerine there's an original that has a blue top and then there is a, um, a citrus fusion that has um, probiotics mixed into it which I actually use and it's an orange top and then the last thing in that system is uh, something called OsteoFX, and it's li it's a liquid. There's a powdered form. I use the liquid form. So there's the there's the 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 omega three um, capsules. There's that lyophilized powder, and then there's a bottle of liquid, 
that looks kind of chalky, but I am able to suspend it in, um, in, uh, usually I use grape juice. <laughs> You're probably not the best thing, but I use uh, a, a diluted grape juice and I mix it in there and then I, um, I drink it. Most uh, um, of the time people, you know, find their way of utilizing it. But the bottom line is this is a component of all the material you need for joint repair. So it has whopping doses of calcium, um, vitamin D, magnesium, um, and glucosamine and um, MSM. And these are the things that you need to to build back uh, a joint that has been um, that has been harmed. So you have all the minerals in the mineral uh, powder, and then you have this uh, liquid that's uh, actually made for the joint and for the um, um, the capsule, and um, and it actually can um, rebuild your cartilage. Um, or help rebuild your cartilage. Um, there's one other product if you really do want to rebuild the, the cartilage that they add in, but uh, you're usually okay with that. Um, so that's what you need for nourishment of your bone. And I think that it's important that you know um, or that you start thinking about the nutritional aspect because our medical system is not designed to be preventive. It's, it's very reactionary. But if you are trying to be a step ahead, you need to be thinking about what nourishes your body, what nourishes your bone, and how to keep nourishing them by giving them the raw materials, and how to nourish them once they've been damaged so that they could be repaired. Um, the second thing I want to talk to you about is something that I found quite by accident helped uh, to restore circulation uh, to the area. So when I first uh, got a vascular necrosis, it was on my le it was in my left hip, and it was too late because I did not know what to do. I wasn't thinking outside of the box. I was going along with just conventional medicine and thinking that that was the only option available to me. And as a result, things kind of progressed until I had to get a hip replacement. However. When I finally found out about something called cold laser therapy, it was through a chiropractor. And I wish I had learned about that earlier because essentially it looks like a flashlight that you turn upside down. So you turn the light onto your hip and it gives a treatment in pulses of like 30 seconds, but it's at a wavelength that's healing. And it's it's called cold laser therapy because you don't feel anything. You know, you would think it's a laser, it's heated. You don't feel a thing. Just like a flashlight, you turn it, you don't even know something's happening. You start wondering if you're even getting treated. But then you start having uh, function restored and pain uh, reversed, and then you start realizing, ah, it is being treated. So what happened was I actually started at, uh, I think I was already stage four um, of uh, hip degeneration when I found out about it. And I was able to stay in stage four for, it didn't reverse it because I had waited too long, but it stopped the progression to where when I got a follow-up um, MRI, they were like, you know, this looks just like, you know, the last imaging. It, it, it kind of seemed like it just arrested the, the, the breakdown. It didn't get worse. It didn't get better, but it just stayed there. So what I decided is, okay, it's too late for my left side, but I still have my right side to, to be concerned about. So let me try to take care of my right side. And so when I started getting just the tiniest bit of pain in my right side, I went and I got, I, I, I found a, uh, a chiropractor that did cold laser. I didn't, I wasn't going for adjustments or anything like that. 
I was simply finding a chiropractor that that actually did cold laser therapy. Uh, they used um, a laser called the Microlite, um, I think Microlite 830 uh, laser. You can look that up. Um, and uh, like I said, it was in pulses of 30 seconds and my treatment would be like five minutes and I was out, but I could tell the difference in my, in my hip. The pain went away. And basically what they were doing or, or what it was doing was um, it was accelerating healing by dilating the, um, the blood vessels and allowing for that inflammatory response to happen. But guess what? When you dilate blood vessels and you're, and those blood vessels are clogged, guess what's going to happen? You widen the path and you cause them to get unstuck. And so suddenly you have returned circulation to the area. That's why the pain was going away was because all of a sudden the area was getting oxygenated again and there was circulation returned to the area again. So if that, if there's anything that I'd want to share with you would be to find out from a chiropractor um, if they have cold laser therapy and if they don't, who does? Um, and, and work from there. Um, I remember there was a, a time when you could go to the Microlite laser, um, cold laser therapy website and they would tell you which provider in the area had uh, cold laser therapy to offer um, for you. In fact, that's how I find, found um, the, the first person to work on my, um, on my right hip. The third thing is traction. So I found out about traction again through desperation. I couldn't figure out anything that would stop the pain as it was, was progressing. It would be where I would be up most of the night. I was still working and I, my, my night was interrupted by pain. And so I noticed somehow that when my husband would pull on the leg. I would have him pull on the leg, all kinds of things. When he would pull on the leg and my hip would kind of increase just a little the space in between the hip, the pain would go away. And so I realized that what it was doing was creating attraction. So then I created attraction at home. I got a big stone. I tied a, 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 a rope kind of. <laughs> a cloth rope uh, to the stone and then the other to my leg. And then I went on the bed and pulled myself up and away from the stone so that it would pull on my leg and pull uh, like a space between my hip. And I would get a sweet relief that allowed me to fall asleep. That was my poor man's version of traction, but traction does the same thing when you have um let's say it's like a slinky vessel and you're and it's something stuck in it and you're like pulling and push uh changing the length of it just that change and the snapback allows for whatever clogged it to become unclogged and so then you get restoration restoration of circulation to the area again and the pain goes away, and it's a, such a relief. Um, but it, because it re returns circulation, it now is allowing um, nutrients and oxygen to now come to the site and heal it. So, as you're doing these things, make sure that you have your nutrition on board with your multi-mineral supplement that that would be taken to the sites that need it. And, and as raw materials and be utilized for the rebuilding of your bone. I hope this was helpful. Um, until next time, this is Dr. Simone Says. And remember, you are a sickle cell thriver, not just a survivor. If you have benefited in any way from this uh, video, please like and comment. And uh, please subscribe to the channel and share the link with one other person as your good deed towards the sickle cell cause. Thank you and have a great day.